up, everybody? My name is Garrett Hartle. Welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. We're very happy to have you here today. And pretty excited about everything. We have like two weeks of stuff to cover this week. Right, Jess? Yeah. This is Jessica, <laughs> everybody. Can I turn the camera on you like always? No. Someone said I was supposed to do it twice. We'll see if it was in later. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it wasn't you. <laughs> oh, man. So we have basically two weeks to do it. For those of you guys that missed last week, that, I know, I mean, I know lives are like, come in and hang out and, you know, and participate and stuff like that. But last week's live, do you remember around the timestamp? What was that time? It was 51.30. 51 minutes and 30 <laughs> seconds in was probably one of the coolest moments for me. I mean, so we hijacked. This is supposed to be last week live. And then we have our posts that go up on Thursdays, right? With yeah. the little picture of the four random people and all that kind of stuff. Still, which still random. <laughs> could be you. It could be four of you. If you throw some swag on and make a picture going like this. Hmm, here's me thinking about what Garrett should do on a live. And if you send me a picture like that of yourself, we'll put it in the thumbnail. Um, so send those pictures in. Where do they send those? Info mm -hmm. at reachoutreptiles.com. Um, and you can email in pictures of yourselves and just, just put in the title, like, you know, picture for the thumbnail. And you guys can be on our thumbnails. So we want to, you know, include you guys with these. But... On those two, we had uh, suggestions, questions, things like that that you guys wanted to deal with. So those of you guys that are on here, you can either super chat and we will address your concerns in a timely manner. Or you can wait until tomorrow and throw your questions up and we'll try to get to as many of these as we can on that post. So that would be super cool. We also have some special celebrity, celebrity in my mind, guests for the super chat stuff. So... More more <laughs> contributions from the Reach Out Reptiles That's called community. you cheating. <laughs> it might be me cheating, but trust me, it's to everybody's benefit. Everybody's benefit here. So, um, yeah, it should be good. But, oh my gosh, this has been a crazy week. I just got back from uh, visiting Richard uh, Bilbo. We call him Reach Out Reptiles West. And picked up a, a beautiful clutch of baby snakes. Um that made their way back. So we have the Karampas, and now we have the their their dwarf slash super dwarf albinos and albino het snows. So pretty cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty exhausted. I've been the last pretty much straight two days. I got in at three o'clock last night um, doing that. So and yeah, any other? We'll just do a quick announcement section. So the other fun thing is like uh, we picked up some African soft furs for breeding to add variety to our rodents diets. I figured it was a good time with, this is the very beginning now guys, of hatchling season. So it's a great time to, you know, start thinking about, what's up baby, where are you going? Which kind of dwarf or super dwarf? This is a dwarf super dwarf cross girl too, um, from last year that, uh, that you guys wanna, you know, wanna work towards and everything like that for the season. So, but because it's the beginning, we picked up some African soft furs uh, from, from oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. I'll say it. It's live. Like you're, right. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's what secrets are for. Yeah, the secrets are for lives. <laughs> Cold-Blooded Cafe. It was Cold-Blooded Cafe. So they secretly have African soft furs over there. Because I drove there, uh, they hooked me up. Um, so thank you, Stephen and Desiree, for that. So we have uh, a small group of those that, we want to start breeding to have some live babies available for the super dwarfs. Um, really just because I, I think that the ASFs are a great species. They're a great size. You know, all that stuff is, um, is awesome. Oh, Rob Christian over at nerd is texting me, asking me if I'm still good for their live or not live, but, uh, their podcast tonight. Do you guys follow their podcast? It's reptile talk. Um, it's okay, Rob. I'll just stop the live feed and text you back so we're going to um, do this and then afterwards we do our patreon live and then we're going to do i'm going to jump on a podcast with rob and jeremy from nerd two great guys um we have them on brian and i's podcast searchable as reptiles are you guys following searchable as reptiles is asking for a shout out yeah yeah you're too late <laughs> i just searched you and and reptiled you and you're good to go searchable as reptiles is our podcast 
We did uh, Kevin McCurley on the last one, which was a very interesting. It's an off-topic podcast, but those of you guys that participate in these lives, I want to know in the comments section, are you keeping up? I mean, so two days driving, I caught up on like all my podcasts. I love to listen to them when they're driving. I know a lot of people just turn that stuff on when they're cleaning the reptile room or whatever, but um, there is so much good stuff going out there. There's, there's, there's kind of like the good people side and then the good stuff side. And then a few people are managed to have a, a foot in either side of that on either side of the fence. So pretty, pretty cool. But I don't know how you guys keep up with all your picking who is going to bring you your content and stuff. I guess it's good timing. We're all still kind of like locked up for COVID. Even if I'm driving two days, you know, I'm not seeing anyone. It's literally just me inside my car driving for two days, you know, there and back. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I guess it couldn't come too soon. We should probably get into questions. We got two weeks of questions to handle this week. Yeah. Are you guys ready? Get your super chat buttons ready so you can, oh, she's being cute. Look at her. <laughs> Little snow. Just resting. That was Henry Lopez that wanted to see some snow and purple. Well, here it is. Here's the snow and purple. This is a purple snow. And he asked, why are snows hard to produce? Uh, snows are actually hard to make because they're double recessive. So, you know, if, if you were saying, hey, I want to make a snow project, snow is a combination of anerythristic and albino. So you could make a snow from a purple phase. You could do a lavender phase. You could do a white phase albino. Those are all called snows. Um, there's a couple of snow chinos now, uh, as of 2020, we, we made a couple, um, but those are super rare. Hopefully we'll see some orange glow snows. So really any kind of albino strain and anery. The reason they're hard to make is because you got to take an albino and an anery. And when you breed those together, you get a whole clutch of normals that are double head snows. That's one generation in. Then if you get a pair of those normals, I should show the new babies because that's exactly what they are. Yeah. They're in shed. Um, if you get a pair of those normals, you grow them up for four years, you breed them together, then let's say, you know, a, a good first clutch for a super dwarf retic would be like 16 eggs. That would be a great clutch. And you have the odds that after the four years of growing up your double heads and producing with them that you might get one snow. And so that's kind of how it is. We've been producing snows for many years. Um, our original snow that started our project, we started with visual in 2009 and we've still you know produced i don't know not that many you see a lot of pictures of them because they're pretty but we get a couple snows every year maybe so you're going in there yeah well i'll, I'll bring out a double head i'll show you what the previous generation looks like some of these things are like ridiculously good looking so this is this is the richard bilbo stuff he took his mail as probably the the coolest patterned Annery ever. So this is developing a new bloodline of snow right stuff or, or really outcrossing it. So his male is from um, very high percentages, 75% Superdorf, 12.5% Jampea. Um, that animal represented already six generations of breeding snows into Dwarf and Superdorf. And then what he did was he outcrossed an Annery, head albino, to a Jampea albino to bring in more of the bold Jampea contrast. And he just selected between two. Look at this particular example. Can you guys see the crazy banding on the neck? Massive white rosettes. You can see a lot of the Kalatoa influence in that black line. This is a fresh baby, guys. Hasn't even shed yet. This is what I, I drove out. Richard's from Utah. I'm from Pittsburgh. We met in the middle. And this is what all the hullabaloo is about. Look at those cool tiger stripes on the bottom. I mean, the Jampeas are, are amazing. Um, and they're relatively affordable because you can get a decent sized clutch. So this was 31 babies. So if you, this is 100% double het snow. We did get some albino het snows. That doubles your odds. Hi, BB. The new boy, maybe. Hi, you can go by me on her nose. You can do it, it's alive. He'll <laughs> forgive you. Cute little guys. And cook nice and slow. Incubation temps were, were lower. They come out looking like they're three months old already. So that's great. But look at the, the crazy patterns on that sucker. Sometimes there's nothing like a wild type. It's pretty cool to have just two beautiful wild types, put them together, and then be getting anneries, albinos, snows, like this one all in the same clutch. 
So these are actually similar percentages, somewhat similar bloodlines. And even though this thing hatched thick and stout, this is a, you know, um, about, this one's not quite a year. This one's about seven months old. So you can kind of see growth rate on that. Two different bloodlines. So we like to keep outcross genetics on as much of that stuff as possible, especially when you get into double recessive, high percentage super dwarf, all that. What's the next question, Jess? Um, her panel forums wants to know everything you've learned about maternal incubation so far. Not much. She's in there. She's <laughs> chilling. That's basically it. Have you had to make any changes? Uh, what would you have done differently if you were planning? Nothing. Um, she laid in her lay, bo lay box. I, I don't think you can probably, well, I, I mean, I don't know. This is literally my first uh, maternal incubation of reticulated pythons. I did do carpets and Burmese a long, long time ago. Um, but she laid in her box. We had damp sphagnum. To keep the humidity up, she's in a pretty big, tall enclosure. And so to keep the humidity up, normally we run a paper substrate but we pulled that out, we put the cocoa chip in there, that way we can wet it down with hot water and keep the humidity up real high so that those eggs don't desiccate. But she's just chilling in there. Do you wanna show them real quick? We should show them, just really quick. Jess is laughing because go. I was like, we don't need to go in the room. And she's like, you're gonna go in the room. <laughs> Jess is always right. I should, I should always here. set up the light anyway. That's yes. what I'm learning. Yes, good, good strategy. <laughs> So this is her, and as you can see, tons of humidity. Oh, we're good. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll just take a little, a quick peek inside there. So that Repti chip looks like actually Rob probably just wet it down right before he left tonight. Would, did, did you notice him doing that, Jess? Mm -mm. It looks pretty recently wet down. So that's her up there. And she's making her little adjustments. I mean, I'm sure to you guys she looks the same, but she just kind of moves and wiggles around them a little bit, and she'll let off a little steam or temperature as she feels like she needs to she opens up her coils so should be good um and then she uh yeah she she lets off any extra heat and then when they're a little chilly she pulls it back in and so she's totally regulating she's she knows we're watching look at her breathing heavy hi i'm sorry baby do we wake you up let's see hi honey look here she is <laughs> Hi, cutie. Very cool. Natalie's uh, mentioning uh, Lori, Lori Torini on YouTube actually is a snake behaviorist. She has one of ours. Tau, Tau, Ceti, Tau Ceti? I'm not quite sure how to say it. But he's a, he's a platinum retic um, that came from this clutch. So this is actually Lori's snake's brother. Yeah, I'll get it on there. Um, this is one of our, our high percentage super doors from 2019, actually. So she's got a brother to this guy, and she's doing a lot of experiments just with kind of, you know, different training, snake behavioral. It's, it's pretty amazing. She's got them target trained. She's got them to do all kinds of things that, you know, generally you would expect from maybe like alligators. People are impressed when crocodilians and stuff have that going on. But, um, yeah, to see snakes do it, you know. And she's got a lot of uh, Morelia and Bredeli and stuff like that that she works with. But she did secretly tell me never to be repeated anywhere where anyone would watch that the Super Dwarves are her new favorite. So <laughs> <laughs> that means I win. So those are pretty cute. Um, one quick little, oh, this is the little, we had twins. I should say Richard had twins in this clutch. This is one of the little twin purples. Someone wanted to see a purple that's not a snow. You want to step so dark. Here? Yeah. <laughs> you can see the difference. That snow had a very white background. This is a very orange snake. Now he still has his egg skin on there and hasn't shed yet, but this is one of the new purple het snows that just hatched. Super cute. We do have a, a waiting list on these and stuff like that. Um, but if you guys are interested in any of the double hets or the, we have purple het snows and lavender het snows. You get a nice dwarf i mean they're genetically loaded really really good bloodlines and uh and pretty affordable for for what they are compared to you know some super high percentage one so very good um who's next you guys want to know uh, how about natalia what are some common mistakes people do when they first get into super dwarf retics what is your don't do this advice for new owners breeding or pets 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of thought about this one and the common mistakes. I, I'm actually going to say exact opposite things <laughs> that, are the, that are the mistakes that people make, but it kind of depends on what your goal is. So people getting into their first retics, don't do this. And she says, uh, either breeding or pets. So Natalia, this one's for you. Um, I would say that if you are getting retics as pets, probably the, the biggest and worst mistake you can make is to get too many too fast. Uh, what happens is people get, you know, they, they, they overthink their first dwarf or super dwarf retic. If you're getting your very first one, I would say the only thing that you really need to do is go to the absolute best breeder you can find and have them work with you. Ashley, uh-oh. Super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Hold on. I feel like that's your right, right. we'll open it up. To do we'll the open dance. It. Okay, this one's for Ashley. I think this was how the <laughs> kids were doing it. No, that's not it. How do I floss? There you go. <laughs> That's my attempt. <laughs> we'll show you how she that's supposed to, to be done in a minute. the baby Carampas. <sighs> okay, they're super cute. There's a heart. You have to show them. Okay, okay. So, too many. <laughs> yeah, if Ashley likes the Carampas, you know they're cool. <laughs> uh, I'll show one of mine. They haven't shed yet either. But look at how tiny these are. Look at them. You gotta bring them out here. They're like little worms. <laughs> little worms. They are. Look how small these are compared to that other... Newborn dwarf and super dwarf hatchling, which is like, you know, good, so good sized shiny. bloodlines. Yeah, they're so shiny you can't see, but the pattern is ridiculous on those things. Look at that. One of the cool things about a lot of these crumpas, they look like three different snakes. So this one's got like a chain pattern here. And then if you look in the middle, it's just a super high, even saddle count. And then if you look at the end, they've got those cool bars, which actually Richard Bilbo has kind of. They don't have the varying line thicknesses like these, but he brought it out in those dwarf super dwarf crosses that he made, which was pretty cool. Got a couple of those traits that make the Karampas just amazing. This is this is one of the rarest, uh, I mean, it's got to be one of the rarest pythons in the world. They were never bred in captivity in the United States until us last year. This is only super the chat. third clutch. All right. Super chat. Oh, and chat. you don't have your phone. You're going to have to dance. <laughs> no, you can dance this one, Jess. Okay. You can do it. Jess is very quick to make me dance, but not uh, to contribute you, herself. You started it. What do you guys think about that? You volunteered yourself. She did dance one time. <laughs> Does anyone remember that Lots. one? Okay, hold on. This is uh, this is Finley's snake super chat. Uh-oh, wait. Okay, hold on. <laughs> you say I said, it's just a I, said say, I think so. I said, say, we're going to do a super chat. So go. And he goes, no, he's just a snake. You can't, you can't just say go. He doesn't do a super <laughs> chat dance. For those of you that needed some, uh, some translation there. So if you have a pet, don't get too many too fast. Get your first one from a great breeder so that they can help you out. You can learn along the way. And if you're going to try to shortcut or do something a little cheaper or pick up a sick animal and fix it or an unknown locality and try to send pictures to people and be like, what locality is this? Or all those other mistakes that people do. Do that with your fourth or fifth retic and you'll understand why. Get your first one from the right person so you know exactly what you're doing and don't get too many too fast. People fall in love and then they have six of them when their first one is like three months old and they don't understand what it takes to house and maintain six adult retics. Even the dwarves and super dwarves. I mean, you know... Get, get them all set up really well. For breeders, the beginner mistake would be not enough or going too slow. <laughs> so I think what people do there is they're like, oh, I'm going to buy a female here. I'm going to buy a female there. I'm going to do this here and I'm going to do that there. Maybe I'll invest, uh, you know, because usually breeders are, are doing it and they, they want to buy some like, you know, higher power genetics. They want to get some snows or something like that. They want to be able to make some. So they'll buy like an albino head anery, anery head albino stuff. And let's say they're going to invest a couple thousand bucks. And then they do that and they wait. And then after like 18 months, they're like, you know what? I love these things. I, I completely want to do it. Um, and then they come back and they invest 10 times that amount or whatever. And they try to get set up. And it's like they're painfully, painfully waiting for their females to grow up so that they can just finally get started. So I would say if you're going to do the breeding... 
just go get a female like yesterday. Like send us a message. What is the info at uh, reachoutreptiles.com. Let us know what you want to get into. Buy an animal that's sitting in a rack over there. Get an animal on a waiting list. Get something. Go get a female. Do it now. And then get as many as you can. Um, and set them up. Not as many as you can, but like if you want to have 1.6, get your six and start growing them up so that you can kind of be off to the races when you start. If you know what you want, go get it. That's what I would say with breeders. A lot of them kind of trickle their way in, and then it, it takes them a long time to build momentum. What was so Natalia's super chat? Natalia's super chat was, did you see on Clint's Reptiles Live, he said, the super dwarf you gave him is the absolute best, and if you're willing to spend a little money and do your research, they are wonderful pets. Thank you, Clint. No, they, they really are. Uh, you know, it was fun. Clint had done, like, reticulated pythons, best pet reptile, before I had gotten out there with the super dwarfs. And he said that basically they're the perfect snake, except for their size. So if you can crank it down into super dwarfs, they become the perfect pet, although it does bring out the challenges because he bases on, like, price and availability, and they're, they're fairly rare. Um... I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think it's a great thing if, you know, you know, if you know what you want, you're getting the right animal and it's like a lifetime achievement kind of thing for you. You're probably willing to spend 500 bucks or something to get a nice bloodline dwarf super dwarf cross or whatever. Um, and, and be happy with it. I don't know that they should ever be $25. I don't think that makes them a better pet. I think that probably gives them a worse position, but thanks Clint. Appreciate that. I'm glad he likes them. I hope to get him some more. Cody Palmer says, how does he talk his fiance into letting him spend the money on a lavender or purple female? <laughs> oh, gosh, that depends on your fiance. Some of the fiancés balance that thing like tit for tat. So, like, hey, if you get to spend uh, $800 or $900, the, the male lavender het snows in there are $800. The, the male purples are $900. Um, the, those fiancés are like, well, if you spend $800, then I get to spend $800 on something, you know. Uh, so you could go that way. Uh, some of them want, you know, a promise of like nightly foot rubs for the year. Um, I mean, Jessica, if you were married to somebody that wanted to go buy a super dwarf, what would, what would you need? I don't know. That's come on, come on. <laughs> They're like, come on. And you're like, oh, I don't know if we need a big snake around here. Some of them are just, some, some people are just afraid of them. And if that's the case... That's a totally different thing, yeah. Yeah, if that's the case, just Then you need binge to watch. spend like five times the amount of money on her. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say maybe acclimate her to him, take him to the zoo, get out somewhere, try to get her to have a positive experience. We have a lot of cool um, like family-oriented experiences with them on our channel that you can watch. You have to introduce them, but yeah, I don't know, man. I... I you... you <laughs> I, I'm I'm easier at selling to the husbands than the wives. Unless the wives into the retics, then those poor husbands just get bowled over. <laughs> I'll tell you, if it's the girl that wants the snakes, the guys' the hands are tied. They could be terrified of it. They could be whatever. And uh, yeah, they're they're your wives getting a super dwarf. They're they're doing it. <laughs> so, but it's a little bit different when the shoes on the other foot. For some reason, the guys gotta beg, plead, foot rub. Ginger says sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what all of the women do. But <laughs> I don't know. There's a fear driven into the men in a lot of relationships that are one-sided on the super dwarf issue. I don't know what that is. Yeah. What's next? Um, Brett Ryan. Okay. He said, big fan. Love the live stuff and talk them up Tuesday. You should talk about hybrids, maybe a dwarf bad eaters project. I'm talking super dwarf retic times dwarf berm. That'd be cool. Thanks, Brett. Um, hybrids, hybrids. So I joined a lot of hybrid Facebook groups on on uh, well, on Facebook because I was interested to see some interesting crosses, and they all ended up being two things every every post on there was one of two things one is like uh hey does anyone made this yet they named some random crazy cross or they or the second post is hey i bought a, a ball python and i bought a burmese python and i'm gonna breed them where should i start and these many of these people haven't even bred either of the parent species and they already might they automatically want to go into a hybrid 
I would say good luck. I mean, even I think if I tried to make hybrids, um, I don't know that I would ever be successful because there's a lot of luck involved. There's a lot of fertility issues, so on and so forth. A lot of people hate hybrids. Just I, I don't have any problem with it. Although I will say my favorite hybrids are the ones that are like super far split. Like you have the Asian clade python and the Burmese and the African clade with the ball. And when they make berm balls, that's amazing to me. A ball python and golden cross, ah, not really into it. You know what I mean? That's just like kind of muddying down an angle and without changing it anything. But if you want to make something entirely new, completely like a domesticated animal, and you want to, you know, breed a green tree python to a retic or something, and just make the world's scariest set of teeth that can really have a long reach to get you. Do it. Um, bat eaters are kind of cool. I honestly, I think they're ugly. Sorry, first gen bat eaters to me never look as good as uh, you know the the retics or the berms. Jungles I think are cooler, especially if you can get something like a tiger gene or something out of the retic and carry it to seventy five percent Burmese python that would be a jungle berm <clears throat> a jungle retic would be something like you took the hypo from the Burmese side and ran it over um, there have been some dwarf and super dwarf because Sal daddy made uh, he used the 25 percent super dwarf to a half dwarf Burmese so I guess those babies would be 37 and a half percent dwarf super dwarf I don't think it quite works like that in hybrids but low percentage dwarves and stuff like that that are that are kind of neat but yeah i mean hey man if, if you like it do it that'd be cool if you make a pretty one i'll get in line i would just say put some morphs in it you know get a two gene like a platinum tiger and do it like that so you get four different versions of hybrids if you ever get it but to plan to do a hybrid project kind of hard i think if you were like a successful ball python breeder and you wanted to buy like a, a little super dwarf male and just run, sneak him in with like every female ball python right when she was ovulating and also breed them to the ball pythons to get your regular clutches. And if you ever got like a split father clutch with one baby or something that was a hybrid, that might be probably your best bet at doing something like that. Yeah. Status 304, any tips or tricks on how to keep your snakes warm <clears throat> in the event of a power outage with no access to a backup generator? Hmm. Okay, so I'll give you one brownie point for thinking ahead and, uh, you know, considering this before, like, what do I need to do? <laughs> and you I have another get... super chat from Ashley. Let's talk more snakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's get you guys a super chat dance. Our next super chat dance is from Riley. <laughs> Wait, we got to do that one again. We'll TikTok it. <laughs> more snakes all right where do we pull out why don't you go pick one there's another super chat oh my goodness chris let's talk more snakes <laughs> okay hold on jess is gonna i go. think this is a collective that you talk too much i think well that's probably <laughs> true here's for you chris she's pretty good she is that's, <laughs> that's a good one all right no more super chats i'm running out of dances we need two snakes <laughs> Post, two post snakes. Yeah. Any two snakes? Yeah, well, whatever your favorites are, I guess. My favorites? Yeah, pull, pull out what you want. Are so you, gonna you guys didn't tell us which snake to see. Um, yeah, status 304. One brownie point for thinking ahead. What should I do? Um, but, uh, but then you're saying no access to a backup generator. I would say because you're thinking ahead, go get a backup generator. And if you're thinking ahead and not doing that, then minus your one brownie point, so you're even Steven. But yeah, if, if you if you're saying, hey, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a, a blackout or a brownout in my area, but I'm not gonna get a backup generator to make sure that I can continue to run, you know, my my temperature parameters and stuff. You're in a little bit of a, a pickle. We ambient heat our whole room with natural gas, so if the power ever goes out, they do lose their hot spots, but the room will stay warm. Um, you know, there's other options if you have like an electric car, a lot of, uh, you know, I know like newer electric cars actually have plugs you can use your car battery like a generator, that's kind of cool. Um, you know, you can run them over to a friend's house, you can crack open a bunch of 
you know, uh, hand warmers or something. But if you had a, a thing like ours, just get a backup generator. No, we got a high percentage Platinum Tiger Posset Snow Girl here, yearling. And this looks like a 50% mod do 25% jam to me, normal. Yeah. It's a little Just boy. guessing. I totally didn't know that <laughs> in advance, but just by looking at it. Now everyone's going to send me this. I bought this normal. They Four already year old do. Really small. Can you tell me what locality cross it is? Everybody yeah. does that anyway. I know. That's, I'm just feeding it. <laughs> These are about the same age. This one just hatched out runty. Did you miss a super chat? Mm, yes. Oh, that's summer. Summer, this one's for you. You'll like this one. This is this is my boy. <laughs> do that one. We'll do that one one more time here. <laughs> There's Garrison Super Chat. If you guys want to be in the Super Chat, you gotta send me a little video. And another one. In. Are you out of Super Chat dancing? Shoot. All right, you're up, Jess. <laughs> no. Oh man. You could do it. Super Chat dance. What's the Super Chat? Well, you skip. <laughs> The last one. <laughs> okay, the first one was girl with scales. Do you have any females currently or any clutches on the way that would be a good mate for Giles, in your opinion? Anything would be a good mate for Giles because your snake Giles is a pure super dwarf. He is not pure Kalatoa. <laughs> what would you put Giles with? That means he's already a mutt, so it would probably not be a bad idea to, you know, cross him into something. I'd probably try to get something like this girl that's already super dwarf genetics, maybe has a couple of, you want to hold the little, little, yes. little foot, um, <laughs> that probably has a couple of incomplete dominant genetics in it because you could run Giles to this girl who's already a good small bloodline and just load that cool pattern influence and everything that he has on. That'd be great. Or if you just wanted to make more, like a lot of, a lot of people unfortunately take a pure super dwarf, which might have a little Madu or Kalatoa in it, but they're a mix, and they like calling them Kalatoas now because that's the name people know, or they can Google map it and stuff like that. Um, you could get a pure and, and run it to them just to make more itty-bitty, super tiny retics for people. I mean, you guys in the comments section, don't you think there should be more pure retics available on a regular basis? Maybe not even pure locality, but just... Say a Kalatoa, Madu Cross, or old school Kalatoa bloodline. Um, as far as available, no. Sorry. You can get on the <laughs> list. I mean, I, you could grab one of those albino girls, but they're from like a dwarf sized bloodline. You're really not going to shrink it down a whole lot by adding more super dwarf to them. So, um, yeah, I don't know. For him, I would want, I would probably go with something. A couple of incomplete dominant genes. Just pick your favorites. You know, like everybody loves Motley Golden Child. Yeah. Right? So grab a Molly Golden Child if you like the solid black ones. Platy Tiger if you like the really bright ones. Marble, whatever you want. We have a cool marble clutch cooking. Um, that'll be really neat. I'm not telling anybody what that one is yet, but there's a video coming. So you can see it. That would be cool. Female from that. Even in normal, because they're going to be really high percentage. Oh, what is this? Spinning. What, let's see one of the ones with the lateral back line. Mr. and Mrs. Moralia. Carampa. Hmm. Usually the Carampas don't have the greatest lateral back line. Which one does? Kalatoas. If you're talking about the that one like this, this is high percentage Kalatoa, and you can see even through the tiger and with the reduced platinum, there's that single scale wide, you know, black line. It just runs from the head all the way down the body here. If that's what you're talking about, that lateral black line, let me show you. Yes. I have a really says. cool. There you go. I got a. I've got a really cool one um, that's pure. She's pure Superdorf. This is another one of those where, um, you know, you're not 100% sure of, of what the bloodlines are. Similar to Giles as far as localities, but they are oh, pure Superdorf. Yeah, I know. But look at the the back line. This is pure Superdorf, guys. Can you guys see the influence? of that pure Superdorf pattern on this Platinum Tiger. Yeah, let's get him under the light right here. <clears throat> so her mom is a, is a wild-caught Kalatoa. Her dad was a quote-unquote super dwarf. So, so and the, the reason why, you know, we're saying we don't know they are, it's not that we don't know the animal's bloodline. We can actually track them all the way back to imported animals. Those imported animals just didn't have the data with them. 
So look at that perfect lateral back line. This one's, you know, clearly heavily Kalatoa influenced. And there's the Platy Tiger with the same crazy lateral back line. Can you see that? People say they can't tell the difference in the localities. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Let me, so I just showed you that. I'll show you one of the Karampas and uh, you can kind of compare for yourselves. Karampas can have a lot of striping and stuff, but they, um, let me see here. They just tend to have like a busted up appearance. You can see the difference. Look at the Karampa, basically. This one almost looks like a marble. And then there's the Kalatoa with the, the much more symmetrical. This is not uh, pure Kalatoa, this is pure Super Dwarf. It could be pure Kalatoa, but she's, she's a good example of that lateral back line Kalatoa influence. And then there's the Karampa there, looking like a marble. And some, like he's got some spots that have it, but even on the Karampas, the lateral back line on the Kalatoas tends to, it's almost like stenciled in, perfect one scale wide, see what I mean? And then on the Karampas, it gets like all inky, blotched together, varying line thicknesses, even where it does pop up. So they're very, very chaotic, different looking. And these are babies. Their, their colors are not representative of like adult colors or any of that. So just talk about patterns. Yeah. Do we have another question? question? You want to hang in here? Yeah. More, more snakes, less talk. <laughs> what else do we want to see? You guys want to see the pure jam? Oh my gosh, are these cool? Okay, Anna, Kevlin has a good question. Where can someone get experience with reptiles before buying one? Mm. I think you okay, talked about that a little bit. Let's talk about that, yeah. So this is a pure jam paya. And look at those crazy silvers. Like the, I mean, oh, I love these. Just super high contrast, very asphalty gray. You know. They look a little Kalatoa-esque. They have, you know, just kind of related similarities, but totally different. So where can you get reptile experience? Um, <clears throat> I think, um, you know, it is kind of hard getting hands-on experience where everybody is, you know, stashed away and hidden and, you know, following uh, social distancing guidelines and stuff. Herp societies are great. Um, if you have local specialty reptile shops, you know, that are, that are open and, and operating, you can go in and help with those. I would say volunteer different places. Excuse me. We have a new, um, kid that's coming by. I say kid, she's 17 years old, but she wants to intern here and kind of get some experience around reptiles. Her mom it doesn't want her to have one in her own house, but she'll be turning 18 soon. She could probably move out and get that kind of stuff going so but she just wants to come volunteer and she's willing to do some of the you know whether we're just have her doing dishes or some so contributing to social media or whatever we end up having her do here on on an internship she can get some hands-on experience that way in trade for you know just the the willingness to jump in and you know she may not have any experience with reptiles that's useful but there's always a million things to do with reptiles like if i remove one of these snakes from the cage she can go in and clean it you know we may need the floor floor needs to be swept and mopped right now actually now that i'm looking at it next question <laughs> <laughs> um copycat had a good question available sds under 800 like ones intended for pets zero not super doors <laughs> those ones that um i'll grab another one of those normals out these males are well let me see i got male and female um, there's only a couple of females, so grab them quick if you want them, but these, uh, these are those normals from Richard Bilbo. If you want like a good, small-sized, ridiculously high-quality bloodline, you know, but these are going to be comparable to like a, in the light. a boa, um, <laughs> there you, go. you know, in, in size, and uh, these are $500. 100% double-head snow males. And look at the the crazy color and contrast, even through that, you know, they haven't had their first shed yet. Those would be like 500 bucks. A female from the same clutch would be 750. If you're talking about for a pet, wild type, cool looking retic male right there. 500 bucks, get them while they're hot. <laughs> um, 
that's that's what we would do. The, the reason why I keep saying nothing's available, nothing's available, is because we're right at the end of the season. You know, those those animals. I mean, there's a huge advantage to to buying from a breeder, getting the full <clears throat> kind of gambit of. You're not showing behind the wall, are you? Every time. Every time. Yeah. Hold on, everybody. Stay tight. There we go. That's how you do that. Anyway, I can't see what you're seeing if you can see it or not. Um, but yeah, for 500 bucks, you can have a reach of reptiles animal. You can have access to all the history of the bloodline, stuff like that. Kind of join the family, have something to show off online. People don't poo-poo. That's not a dwarf or super dwarf. That's not legitimate. Or, oh, I hate that guy you bought it from or whatever. Huh, someone might say that. I don't know. I guess not everyone's a fan. I don't have a lot of hate yet, but buy some snakes from me, post them online, and see if you can, you know, drum up any hate for us. That'd be cool. <laughs> you get extra credit points for that. Good. Uh, Lance White says, "I would love to see more morph spotlights, specifically mm -hmm. the Rennick Ghost line. I mm -hmm. know those are not dwarf, but there's not a lot of info on them on the web that I can find about them." Sorry. Yes, good point. So we don't have anything Rennick Ghost here because, as you said, they're not in Dwarf and Super Dwarf. We have a ton of morph spotlights. We have a few more that we've shot. Thomas comes out, films those. We work on those. We have a lot of morphs to continue going through. I'm really glad to hear that you like those. We're working very hard to contribute this kind of free educational information to the world so that they can be educated about these animals and make you know informed decisions, get that kind of experience. You guys are talking about how do we get experience online even during a pandemic. I mean, here you are in a live. You're experiencing everything that's happened. Last week, you got to watch Karampas hatch live. That was the experience of a lifetime. And even just watching it would be cool. But I would say uh, reach out to the people who love the Rennick Ghost stuff or that work heavily with it and encourage them to contribute more to the community. Um, if you love the morph spotlights and you want to see us do more stuff, I mean, I would love to get the Rennick Ghost stuff into Dwarf and Super Dwarf someday. Kind of waiting on Zach Nava to do that. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, Patreon is a great place to start. Our Patreon community is what supports all of the free education and develop development of the market and everything that, that we do. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without that. I wouldn't be able to pay everybody to help me do these kinds of things. Um, very busy as it is. So that's not really a cop-out. It's just I don't, I don't have any. I would personally love to see. There's so many retick people on youtube on instagram and things like that maybe encourage them say you know what i love the channel i love the content can you bring some more educational things um there's a pressure when you're online to entertain i mean we're over here doing super chat dances for everybody <laughs> for some reason and uh somebody needs to hurry up and text me over their oh, little super chat dance super so i can chat. get the next one oh, are you serious yeah that was laura you can oh. thank laura thank you laura <laughs> I can't read it until you do the dance. What's the question? <laughs> uh, let's see. She's going to be in the area in May. Can she visit? Laura? We're she about is Laura on Patreon, Patreon, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Actually, it would be cool to show you. She's got the, the Tom Belongin stuff. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool. So she's got Tom Belong and Crosses. Check out these pure. So Well, we're showing you all these pure localities that we have. Oh, no. That one's in blue. It's okay. This one's my second favorite. <laughs> this cool. is pure Tom Belong and locality. Holy colors. Look at that. Starting to get a little yellow head going. Bold blacks. These are the ones that made those ridiculously good-looking phantoms. So it brought a ton of orange and everything into the babies. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, check us out on Instagram. But yeah, Laura, you're you're on Patreon. We actually have... You should show the little photo. Our mini collection of Patreon people. Oh, it's... Yeah. But I mean, honestly, I guys... I still have other pictures that we haven't printed yet. <laughs> yeah, people... Right? Yeah. People come by. Uh, well, last week... So we, a lot of people ask if they can visit, though. We had What's Nathan... Your standard? Nathan flew in to check out the Karampas hatching. So I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this is my house. So no, if I don't know you, you can't come to my house. Our Patreon community is, is a lot tighter. There's a lot of stuff that we 
get to know each other on a regular basis. We're going to do our, our live thing after this. And like I said, that, that stuff helps us to support us. I mean, you guys are like, As she said, it's up to her. More, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the queen gets to say yay or nay. So if you've been here before, you know, Ashley likes you. Ashley, you would like Laura. She's very Definitely. Nice. Um, I but, can vouch uh, for Laura. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of content, if you guys love seeing that content from us, the only way I am able to provide the time and, and support for the people who make that happen, our team, while it's Thomas, here on um, Instagram, is through that kind of support. Either buying a shirt off the website, could be simple as that. We have the, uh, the poster that we threw together. Um, you know, anything that you guys can do to support us or buy animals from us. You know, I... I I hear a lot of people, like, how many times do we get this email, Jess? Thank you so much for your support. Everything is great. We learned so much from you. And because of you, we just bought our first dwarf or super dwarf from somebody else. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it's great. I'm glad that you guys are getting in. These animals are amazing. Certainly, we're not the only ones that have good animals. But it's like, you know, if someone buys that animal from us and kind of is part of the Reach Out Reptiles community and stuff, it allows us to continue making those videos that helped you guys learn what they were in the first place. Um, because we reinvest a lot of our profits from breeding the animals back into you guys and your education because I think it provides a better future for the animals when they go out there. So if you want to see a better future for animals in captivity, maybe consider buying from the breeders that are reinvesting their profits, trying to make the world a better place for those animals rather than the, you know, somebody that is, is purely breeding for profit or there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, you know, support the people that you like the way they do things so they can still be here tomorrow, you know. Ahead, Alex Demola says, any plan on working with the Ocelot Morph? Yeah, Ocelot, Rainbow, uh, different people kept renaming it, everything. I heard Conda, all that kind of stuff. This is a really just phenomenally beautiful on his own. A lot of times I actually love normals because I can see the influence of the bloodline outside of the morph or pattern mutation. So this is not an ocelot, but this is a 100% double het ocelot and it came from an orange glow. So it's either het albino or het caramel. I don't really care which one, it's a male. This was hand chosen for me from Aubrey Pruitt. Thank you, Aubrey. He's one of the the people that are working, the ocelots are in the hands of a lot of big retic breeders right now. So that's a gene that, it's a pattern mutation. It's pretty cool. You should look it up. Ocelot retic or rainbow retic, uh, rainbow morph retic. Um, they named it that because it kind of resembled the Brazilian rainbow boas in pattern. Um, it's very cool. It's kind of like a motley tiger, but it's a recessive thing. I love it. I, I think it looks great. So we're going to take that double hit male breed it to some super tiny we should show them the little bitty female you guys want to see the kind of like old school super dwarfs not pure locality but um they said more snakes Let's pure talk. super dwarf well, we'll show them of course they want to see it it's cleaning days tomorrow <laughs> you guys can't judge but you know that on our live look i don't know if you guys can see this this girl has all the eggs in there Ooh. oh look at that they're they're not she's not like super loaded yet oh i can't stand the poop but we've got her over here just chilling out relaxing getting ready it looks like she's gonna go into blue and then she'll probably have a big ovulation but this is a pure super dwarf uh breeder female it's one of our smallest females and this is the exactly see see how loaded she is i don't know if you guys can tell but this is exactly the kind of animal we use to bring those new bloodlines in I don't like using like, you know, my pure bloodline Kalatoas or Madus or Karampas <laughs> because back. they are so rare on their own. I don't, I kind of don't want to muddy the water. That's sort of like the dwarf Burmese, back to the dwarf Burmese question. I mean, like, I think we just need more pure prog shy. That's, that's the dwarf berms in captivity. But this is a beautiful, magnificent, small bloodline female bred by someone else. This was from Brian Kaimala, actually. Um, so... Pure Superdorf, um, not going to use her for my Kalatoa bloodlines, but, um, but you know, if I ran something like him to her, I can get a bunch of Posset rainbows. We can grow them all up. They'll be nice and tiny, super tiny, super elite, select from the smallest ones, and then when we run them together, don't fall, baby. 
when we run them together, we can start, you know, shrinking down those great morphs over time to make that rainbow Superdorf retake eventually more accessible to people um, for size, and then later it comes for money. Because like the first time you make a morph in Superdorf, once you have those eight years into it or whatever it takes, you know they're expensive. Like our we everybody loves the cows. That's a morph that everyone's like, can you make the the cow in Superdorf? Well, here she is. This is a year old cow female. She's phenomenal. And we're incubating eggs to hopefully get some golden child orange ghost stripe or at least Superdorf orange ghost stripe males for her now. So someone can get a yearling female, 50% Kalatoa cow, Posset Um, and then a golden child orange ghost stripe or orange ghost stripe that's Posset Anery to go with her. And this animal is very expensive. She's the first one in the world ever made. It's a phenomenal morph. She's getting all her cute spots. Look at how cute she is. Look at those amazing blue eyes. So this is, uh, sorry if I sticker shock guys or whatever, but this, this is a $20,000 animal. A little spot on her neck. But the person who gets her with the orange ghost stripe to go with her is the one who can crank out Superdorf OGS and cows, which are currently basically completely unavailable to everyone. And the idea is you, you buy a snake like this at 20 grand. It's definitely an investment breeding animal, unless you're just super baller and you're like, hey, Garrett, I'm going to take all those eight years of work to make a super dove cow and just put it in a cage and have it be my pet. Ha <laughs> ha, sucks to be the rest of you. You know, I guess you could do that too. I'd be okay with it. I'll just make more. But um, they're hard to make in the beginning, but whoever has these can make whole, like half clutches of them. Um, and they will be the person who can then bring the $5,000 Superdorf cows and then the $2,500 Superdorf cows, the $1,500 Superdorf cows in six, eight, 10 years time. Instead of making one cow for your eight years of work, you can just pump out Superdorf cows to sell, you know, I mean, that's honestly like a retirement package. I mean, I quit my job three years ago because I did similar things. So Jess, I probably wouldn't say I was retired. <laughs> Do you consider what I do retired? No. I retired from the real world and just play with snakes now. So if you want to retire from the real world and work harder than ever, then do it. Do it. Get her. Next question. Cody Palmer. I feel like this one's been asked before, I think. Um, do you notice any behavior differences between morphs? Like, do tigers typically stay more mellow than others? Uh, also include locality. Do you notice behavior between different localities? I think we were asked the locality. It's a good question. A lot of people say stuff about morphs. The only thing that would actually change personality from morphs is if they have some kind of like a neurological thing. So something like a jaguar. Those are basically the spider ball python of reticulated pythons. They're going to act differently. They're going to have a different temperament, but it's not really their temperament. It's their neurological makeup. They're not, they don't have a completely like intact or neuro, or natural neurological, you know, connections going on. The rest of the stuff you hear, like they used to say, like when I was a kid, they're like, oh, look, tigers, they're super tame. But what people didn't consider is like back then, it was the 90s, every retic was wild caught and tigers were like one of the first morphs. So they were the only captive bred ones. So what people were noticing was the difference between wild caught and captive bred. You know, um, and then eventually, like, any of these retics that are captive bred are great now. Um, piebalds, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, they're so nasty, because they're, they're used to this world of captive bred retics, and then they get, like, an F1 off of a wild caught, the very first generation head pieds, um, and then those are bred back together. Those things still have, like, you know, heavily ingrained on their instincts and stuff like that, so, you know, they ha they're going to have different temperaments but a lot of it is how you work on it you know so this is um this is a 37 and a half percent super dwarf tiger het pied uh so not a super dwarf animal but it has some super dwarf in it and we're working towards pied projects with these this one was produced by jeremy gore he's a good guy to talk to if you want to get something like this but she's great you know this is from the pied and if we make visual pieds out of a nice girl like this, I'm sure they're going to be awesome. You know, and a lot of that just has to do with me getting it as a baby, straight from the breeder, knowing the habits, getting that breeder's recommendations on what that individual animal likes, and, uh, and working with them. So, no, I don't think any morphs have any different temperaments. 
uh, localities, yes. Yeah, they can have different temperaments for sure. Um, I mean, at this point, they're, they're all still retics, but <clears throat> just like you would have, let's say, different species of carpet pythons are going to have different temperaments. Different species of rat snakes are going to have different temperaments. You know, um, the different scrub localities or species Super are going to have them. Woohoo! So, yes, they do have different temperaments for the different localities. Some of them are already in their own subspecies. Some of them are probably going to be named their own subspecies or even species status. So you get different temperaments. These tombalongans, for example, um, tombalongans and slayers tend to kind of like pee on you more when they're scared. Um, but then they, when they grow out of it or whatever, they're great. You work with them. They're fine. This is the other tom that I just pulled out. She's a total sweetie. Whereas, um, you know, the, let's think, like the, the Kiowatis, for example, they tend to be more snappy if they're scared, you know, snap at you and stuff when they're babies. But um, we've got our captive bred Kiowatis. Let's say this one, for example. And she's a lot thinner bodied. She's much more active, but we work with her and everything and she's great. She's no longer snappy. And it's not, it's not because it's no longer in her nature. It's because she's comfortable in her environment. Because we work with her all the time. And she's so good. You're so good. Yes. Yes, you are. You're just more active than the top belongings. So they do have different temperaments. If you guys want to know differences between the pure localities and the uh, different temperaments and stuff, 2020, we actually had five pure dwarf and super dwarf localities of the seven. We actually own and work with all seven. We have Madu's cooking now. That's number six for us. I don't. I don't know anyone else that actually like <clears throat> owns five of the dwarf or super dwarf localities. I'm not saying that like a braggy way or whatever. They're just they're really disjointed groups all throughout collections. So but we were able to breed five last year. We work with all seven plus three or four other localities. So if you guys are interested in pure localities as pets, then um, you can let me know. The crosses kind of all bets are off though. They're selectively bred, so you know you're you're crossing stuff into beautiful, sweet, nice animals, you know, and so you get a little bit of it, but not nearly as much. Next question, please. Good question. Well, you. you didn't get your super chat. <laughs> that oh. was Kyle Abram. He says, up, "Thank you, buddy." Hide super dwarfs? Question mark exclamation. <laughs> yes, wouldn't that be cool? I mean, that's like cow status, right? We got the super dwarf cows. We want to work on the pides. This year, we have, I mean, we already, we pulled a clutch today from the Pied Project. So I already have two clutches in the incubators from the pides. Um, and then we have other stuff like this girl. If she goes, you want to bring her over here? Yep. This girl's 50% Madu, 50% Kalatoa. She's older, proven. Super dwarf girl, but this girl was bred to our um, our albino pied. So we would get super dwarf 100% double head albino pieds from her if we can. And I'll probably keep a, a pair of those and then sell the heads. They won't be cheap because whoever makes them can race me to pieds. But our, our goal with the pieds was to make all of our own heads this year. So we're, we're putting it into the other morphs that we want. We're reducing the size of the bloodlines. I mean, our my other Madu girl that's going to the pied who's hey baby who is um just off food is this girl here so this is 75 percent madu 25 percent kalatoa another pure super dwarf cross look at that beautiful swell right here of follicles so this is a great size retic it's pretty much ball python size but longer um this is what we're gonna breed our albino pied into to get 100 percent double heads well this girl is probably an anner as well, so I guess those would be triple heads. So I may keep those, but you can have the ones from the other one. Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles says, how is there 100 people watching, but only 47 likes? <laughs> What's up, buddy? Thank you, Adam. Yes, please like the video. Like we said, support, support. That would be great. Like the video. Toss and, us a super chat. And Just be cool like Adam is. Whatever you got to do. You have another super chat. Woohoo! 
Adam, can you please text me a video of you super chat dancing? Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Phone number is 412-925-1933. I need a super chat dance for this one from you, Adam at Wiccans Recto. This one is from Scottish Rob. What's up, Scottish? Or Thanks Rob? For... <laughs> There's also a one. He's the one. Yeah. Thanks for being a good distraction, guys. Found out I might have IBD in my collection, so oh. needed cheeriness. Best to yins. <laughs> Be careful. Um, a lot of, you know, IBD has like a ton of different symptoms, and so it's misdiagnosed a lot. But, um, I mean, I would, I would trust your vet and everything. Just make sure that they, you know, that they get you the proper results and actually check for it. Don't, don't, if your vet's just kind of like looking at me, I'm, hmm, yeah, that's IBD. That wouldn't be good enough for me. But, uh, I'm really sorry to hear that. That's definitely one thing that's great about having, like, a single species collection for the most part. Not a lot coming in or out and the stuff that we do get in. Like the stuff from Richard. I mean, you guys probably saw the room tour of his place. If you haven't, just search our channel for Richard Bilbo. You'll see his room tours. You can actually see the parents of that animal breeding. Super chat. They were breeding while they were there. Oh, no. We need and more. And we're late for Patreon. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Super chat dance right out here. We're going to do the moonwalk. I think you got to be on the feet for this one. Oh. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> Adam, text me quick. Super chat. I need one. I'm behind. <laughs> Did we get one? Adam? Adam? No. Come on. Oh, that was Chris Gear snake naming before breeder meeting. We didn't name anybody today. Did you guys see the platy tiger, Poshet Snow? She does not have a name. That was the strike down the back, high percentage Kalatoa. You guys know the drill. What we're going to do is your comments in the comment section right now. Please like the video. And then you can comment what you think we should name this girl. Let's do it right now. Come on. Let's bring her back in here. So this is her. She is beautiful. Oh, man. We missed one. Oh, I missed one. Super chat? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Hold on. I got to scroll back. Super chat. I'm waiting for uh, Adam. Nathan Katz says, Nathan, drop a up, like dude? for Robert Paulson. <laughs> Where is Robert Paulson? He's over here somewhere. I thought he was right around here. No, he's right here. Friday oh. Slayer. Of Robert Paulson. <laughs> Rob wanted that one to be Robert Paulson. Thank you, sir. Super chat dance. <laughs> okay, this is her, guys. She needs a she needs a name. She's staying right here. What I love about her is she has these like black eyes. Look, her eyes are like super dark and kind of chrome. She's going to be a super high yellow animal as an adult. We've got so think Tinkerbell. Color. We've got Kara. Tink Tinkerbell is We've good. got Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson? That's just because <laughs> I was doing the moonwalk. Come on now. Yeah, well, Ophelia, Tiger Lily, Lucille, Princess, Odette. Another vote for Tiger Lily. Odette. Diamond, Buttercup, Carmella. Okay, Tinkerbell, was that a Patreon Another person? Another Because if it is, they're automatically disqualified. <laughs> well, no, no. Tinkerbell, who's Tinkerbell? Bob who Evans. Bob Evans, like the restaurant? <laughs> okay, uh, Bob Evans, I'm picking your name, but I don't think that your name is Bob Evans. <laughs> you just told him he wasn't real. I don't think you're real. <laughs> but you're making me hungry. <laughs> Tinkerbell, I love it. He Thank says my real name is not Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, called it. All right, Tinkerbell it is. I like it. Plus, you could call her Tink. You could okay. have made that any smaller. I need, <laughs> I need a boy. We you need, need to hurry up. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. Don't rush me. Where's that boy? He said oh, you met at the show. Okay, here's one I gotta keep. All right, so this is for, you know, the ongoing um, diversity of bloodlines. This is the most advanced, the snow project has come. So Eric Lee Super has, chat. Woo! Eric Lee has uh, some snow stuff that is actually related to Richard's stuff. And that's the six generations in that I was telling you about. And he bred his snow male visual to a pure Travis Kubis bloodline female. 
And this guy is deep in blue, but this is from Eric. This is 87.5% Kalatoa, 6.25% Jamp. Ooh, and he's shedding right now. So this guy is going to be a uh, future foundational stock for me because when somebody else does something good like Eric did with this clutch, I pay the man. I pay the man, I get the snakes. And I add them in so that I can have even better ones than him. <laughs> Just kidding. Not really. So this little dude needs a name. He should be super ridiculously highly advanced on the Dwarf and Superdorf. He's very well outcrossed to pure Superdorf. Typically what happens, you take a snake like this, you breed him to his sister to keep the percentage high and you make more snows. I'm not doing that. I'm going to run him to something like that super tiny girl. Make a bunch of posh hats. And you got another more. super chat. You're talking more. too okay, much. Good. Let's, well, let's talk what more snakes. Who else's name? What's your name? Go. <laughs> um, oh, his second super chat was to say his name is Sid. Oh, and you got another super chat. Sid, thank you. Another super chat. That's two Sid. more dances. No, I did so the one. So Sid I do says. Need Adams, though. Adams. Yeah, there's three together. Okay, what is it? Um, Sid says, yo, I'm going to get a pair of striped Bradley. How, is that my saying? Oh, those that are right? awesome. Do I, I have them. your blessing to add to my collection? Who? Why do you need my blessing? Uh, he wants it. Are we becoming like a religious cult? <laughs> <laughs> uh, striped Bradley are awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Get the, you know, have the person swab for Nido and bring them in. You know, striped red lie are, are great. I love red lie. Big chunky heads, super cool snakes, extremely temperature hardy. What's not to love? What's this guy's name? Sid. <laughs> not Bob Evans. <laughs> Bob Evans got Tinkerbell. No. Sid. Um, let me scroll again. We Let's got, well, Chris Gear's super chat was name him Stonks. We had a Stonks? couple of Stonks. S-T-O-N-K-S. I don't even know what that means. Let me like scroll bombs. back. We could name his girlfriend Bonds. <laughs> stocks and Bonds. We've got a few votes yeah, for stocks. Know. Mint. Stonks. What is stocks? Can Snowden. somebody tell me what stonks? Snowden. Mint. It's a boy. Come on. Let's check if it's a boy. What are we going to do? Hold with us, Patreon. Guys. Ralph. Ralph. I like it. Stonks, I don't think so. Unless Avalanche. Somebody can tell me. Blizzard. Cool. Oh, the snow. Thor. Thor. Thor is good. I like the Avengers. Marvel. Keep Mayan, it coming. Mayan. Jasper. Jasper. Someone says Jasper every week, I feel like. In fact, I think we might have a Jasper already. Gimli. I don't know how to say that. G Gimli. Gimli. Is that, it? is that it? Lord of the Rings. Gimli. Uh, the Dwarf. <laughs> That's funny. There's like... Um, Chris just keeps typing stonks. <laughs> Chris, Chris. Pocket. Pocket. Laura says we like stonks. <laughs> <laughs> what is stonks? Buy a snake. Zach Nava says stonks. No, you guys cannot influence <laughs> me to name this one. Ginger says I think stonks has it. Nathan Cat says stonks. <laughs> Gimli it is. <laughs> you can't. Who said Gimli? You asked them to vote. I didn't say vote. They I voted. Said, Give me the name. No, they're bullying They did. Me. They gave you, you the name. You guys are pressuring me. At least a hundred times. I feel like I'm 14 all over again and it's passing around the cigarettes or whatever. No, Stonks is out. Gimli you shouldn't is have in. asked. Lord of the Rings for the win. Boom. Drop mic. <laughs> I didn't say vote. I wanted suggestions. <laughs> if I want you to vote, I'll say vote. Gimli. Oh, we got two more super chats. See? Oh my gosh! What did they want? You gotta do you guys two more. Can't just make the live go forever, or can they? It was just those names again. The oh, there's chats. another one. Stonks. Another stonks. Yeah, well, that was Chris Gears, Nathan Katz, <laughs> Jim Lee, again. No. Kyle Abram says, "Do you trust a single test for Nido?" I think you. Oh, take super chat. Another one right now? Yes. I think you have to dance. You're Jess. missing one. Oh my gosh. Did You're Alex missing one. Me? Here, come here. That was so his Nido super test, chat. Nido test before it sends. Get a negative result. Bring it back out. That was Quarantine. his super chat was that he texted you his dance. <laughs> and then, oh yeah. Here it is. 
Nice. Okay, super chat dance from our guard fox. Boom, baby! <laughs> that is the cutest dance yet. Wait, we got to do that one again. Adam, you're the man. All right, everybody follow suit. Adam says like the video <laughs> and send a picture of a dancing fox. <laughs> Pretty sure that's a Pomeranian, but, you know, if you wanted to identify as a fox, that's okay with me. All right, guys. Thank you. I love you. We'll see you right here next week, Wednesday. Get your snake names ready. We'll do a boy and a girl like we do every week. Send your questions in on the post uh, that's going to go up tomorrow. And let me see. Adam, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Okay, stop talking. You're wait, late. Wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. I want to, I, I need somebody to text me I'm a gonna picture of I'm going to click it off. Dressing. <laughs> Did you cut me? No. <laughs> Talk Did to you Esther. Cut me? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I got I don't know how to, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm trying to find this picture. Recreate a picture like this of you guys coming up with questions. If you send it to me tonight, I'll post it tomorrow. It will be awesome. Ginger's asking, is it Patreon or Breeder? It's the Breeder meeting. Breeder level. So those of you guys that are on Breeder level, we got breedings to talk about. So our Breeder levels are upper echelon Patreon guys. We'll see you guys over there okay, bye. right now. Catch the rest of you.